Now we have got our owner and chef of Titchwell Manor. We have got Eric. Hello. Thanks so much for popping on. Do tell us about yourself and Titchwell. A little bit of background about the hotel. We're, I think we're in our 33rd year on the North Norfolk coast now. Like when we, when we bought the hotel, uh, I was eight and grew up there. So as you can imagine that the hotel, you know, it's more than just work for us. It's a, it feels like sort of part of my identity, to be honest. Having weddings at the hotel is one of the most amazing things about having a hotel. Um, I got married there, my sister did, my two sister-in-laws. We've had happy times and then people have had funeral wakes there. And it's, you know, the memories that are entwined in the business. You know, often people will say, you know, would you consider selling? And it just seems, it wouldn't seem possible. Mum and dad used to be heavily involved and I sort of came back as a chef and I was head chef for about 15 years. And then about six years ago, you know, they deserved a bit of a rest, bless them. <laughs> <laughs> so they started sort of trying to retire and step back. And um, it made sense for me to do a bit more than just the kitchen and had to look at uh, running the whole business um, and at the same time opened some businesses uh, elsewhere. There's Eric's Fish and Chips, which opened three restaurants and um, Eric's Pizza that we opened last year. So now I oversee the whole operation, which I really like and really fits well for me. But a bit more wedding specific, it was my mum who used to manage all the weddings, me and her meeting couples from the very start. And not that much has changed really. Like from those early days, we would sit down and actually just say like, what are you looking for? You know, what feel and style do you see for your special day? And for me, I really like getting excited by events and actually feeling like it's something that I'm passionate about and excited by it. And the, the best way I get that is when it's bespoke. If it's someone saying, we want certain ideas. And it, it's simple things like one couple, one was from Lincolnshire and one was from Norfolk. And they really wanted to marry those little quirks of the different food and using certain Lincolnshire ingredients that would give the event identity to them. And I find if it's bespoke like that, I get excited about trying to create a, a unique menu which we all get behind and really enjoy delivering. Yeah, definitely the the personal touch, which mum's obviously passed on. You've passed on to the team, you know, as all of these suppliers and have very graciously said that that is their favourite thing about Titchwell is the personal and bespoke service that we offer. Tell us a little bit about how that personal touch goes into the food and uh, how couples can decide on a menu for their wedding. So we've tried to sort of give a bit a bit of a guide as well now so we do have example menus and um, menus people can choose from i've found like over the years some people are quite clear what they're looking for others sort of sit down and just go talk to me <laughs> and that's almost like more difficult i think so so we found actually having some guidance with menus helps and with images people can actually get a feel for it others have a very clear vision and I'll usually sort of work with them to sort of create that in a in a way that will work for 80 people and we can deliver you know really good product at the end of the day and sometimes I think couples obviously they're not they're not chefs so they're they're not aware of what's going to work and what's not going to work so they often need a little bit of guidance to deliver what they want really I think it's quite important you do have to think about the operation of getting a hundred hot meals out quickly we've had a couple of comments these food picks are making me hungry uh, i can highly recommend eric's menus and the local produce and uh, kelly i still rave about the dishes eric created for penny and rob's wedding they were delicious tell us a little bit about simple ideas to achieve that special feel for, for me it's sort of the wedding is almost like a really really good party where you're inviting sort of a hundred of your best friends and family and like, I sort of realized this on the build up to our wedding. I was like, this is incredible. We're gonna have like everyone there that I like <laughs> and they're all gonna hang out together. And this is like, what a great opportunity. So I sort of tend to look at it a bit like that. Let, let's make a really exciting party that is memorable. Um, I think one really easy one is to have magnums instead of normal bottles. Something oh, yeah. like for me, having a magnum of champagne or magnum of Prosecco or even red wine, it always has a real sort of feel like this is a special event. And essentially there's no, there's no extra cost. So that's always a bit of a no brainer for me. I think like if I go to an event and you're getting poured champagne out of a big magnum, it's just, 
it's, it's really good fun and it's memorable. I think canapes is a really good opportunity. I think some, sometimes people look at a three course meal and the canapes can get cut out for budget. Whereas I'd say really focusing on that one, two hours that you could have, having more elaborate canapes. We, we've done some really interesting things where like one of the pictures there is like a green olive rocket and lemon foam. And we go around sort of doing that in front of people. The other canapes you can see in the picture now, we've got like oyster arancini served in the oyster shells. Uh, we did a little crab donuts. And I think that that's an opportunity for people to get really excited about the whole day ahead. You know, they've just watched their best friends or, you know, really good friends get married. They're excited. They want to chat. They want to drink. Like you, <laughs> most, um, most weddings I go to, you're sort of like, at that point, you're desperate to get a few drinks down and really catch up with loads of people. I would say really focus on that area and set a standard for the whole day. It does get people, it's their first, no pun intended, first taste of what's to come. Yeah. Um, you know, they've got the canapes, they're going to thinking, oh gosh, this is amazing. I wonder what's in store for us for the meal. And just looking at these images, I mean, how beautifully presented these are. And a real simple thing is doing like an oyster bar or having like a piece of ham out there being carved. And we try and mix it up so there's, there's almost little things to see. A lot of people have been to a few weddings and I think everyone generally wants something that's memorable and they want to sort of have a, have a unique day where everyone, you know, talks about it and remembers the whole event. So we, we usually, like for canapes, I always think it's quite good to have some classics, like some, even like some nice volivants done well, but then go quite modern with other things, with the foams and and different bits just to sort of capture people's attention. Just to touch a little bit on dietary requirements. At the moment, we've definitely got a lot more guests that are vegan and vegetarian. Yeah. Um, and then of course you've got celiacs um, and you know dairy free. What What is the process for those couples uh, choosing uh, dishes for their guests with those requirements? Yeah, we would. I mean, I think that goes alongside any concerns about individual guests. It can just be like people really simple taste. I think that's come up so often people are really worried about sort of uncle john because he only eats sausages so they're looking to have like sausage and mash for their meal and we always approach that we'll just like pick out individual people rather than you know focus a meal to to look after sort of a handful of people so we're always happy to do individual dishes for certain people it's no problem as far as dietary i usually I, I like to do the individual again like i've just said but tie it in as much as possible with the main dish if you're a vegetarian, then you just get like the vegetarian option and it's way off what everyone else is having. It's really disappointing. So in the restaurant, I've often tried to look at that. If someone's a celiac, it's, a, it's an opportunity to give them a really good meal and exceed their expectations. So like that lamb dish you can see there, we would try and recreate a similar dish. So if it was a vegetarian, we'd do a vegetarian dish with hazelnut and peas and develop it from there. I think we've actually done that before and done like a pea risotto with like halloumi fried on top. And um, Make me very hungry. <laughs> yeah, well, just carrying it. So it feels like it's been thought about. It can feel like the afterthought, which is quite sad. So, and I, I think we've had a few couples where we've then we've done a vegetarian starter and everyone's having that. And then you make sure the dessert. I love vegetarian food. I'll, yeah. Someone's commented, um, uh, Claire, I've had vegan meals a few times at Titchwell and they're always ace. I always like sort of exceeding expectations and I'm keen to do sort of simple menus, but then really deliver something different. And like that lamb dish, if there's a picture there, you could just cook, you know, like Norfolk lamb, pea and mint with hazelnut or something. And it's it's really simple flavours, familiar flavours, which would suit, you know, all sort of, whether you've got foodies there or, you know, your granny's there that likes lamb. I think that's a really good formula for wedding menus. Try and get some like familiar flavors, but deliver it with some skill and a little bit of interest um, to create something a little more memorable. Yeah, I think that's the, the perfect point to end on is familiar flavors and dishes, but provided in a unique and beautiful way.